I'm doing some research for a client and I'm, I'm going to be presenting to them on what carbon removal means. Carbon removal, it's something that I seem to spend a lot of time thinking about and talking about and working on, but it seems to change. It seems to, in 2018, it's one thing, in 2019, it's another, in 2020, I decided to go ask other people, people from the air miners community, uh, people who are my friends, what is carbon removal to you? What is it when you talk with your friends, with your family, uh, with your colleagues? What is it today? So here's what came back. So greenhouse gases, um, they're causing this feedback loop. So it's when you're dealing with a vicious cycle, you can't just do less, um, as in mitigation alone cannot reverse the feedback loop or even halt it, um, right? It can only slow it down. And so when you're dealing with all these positive inputs that feed into each other, the action that you take to try and halt and reverse that feedback loop has to actually subtract <laughs> carbon that is already existing in the atmosphere at a rate that will slow or stop um, and hopefully reverse that feedback loop. Um, and yeah, so one of the best explanations that I came across is essentially we have a, a bathtub and the earth, let's treat earth as a bathtub. And we've turned on the faucet of CO2 emissions at the start of the industrial revolution. And that faucet has continued to run and our bathtub is filling up and it's close to overfilling. And so bad things are going to happen once it's overfilled. So we need to have more drains to take some of that CO2 and store it or utilize it elsewhere. The way I say is we can pull carbon from the air and we can permanently store it in the ground. And I differentiate between carbon removal technologies and natural systems like trees and soil and the ocean. And um, I'm been focused on the storage component where we store the carbon once we take it from the air and what that storage, what the characteristics of that storage are. Um, so I, I, tend to, I tend to actually not use an analogy when I talk about it. I, I really do, uh, coming from a chemistry background, I take it to a very, like a really fundamental level where it's not necessarily that you're removing carbon from any particular place, but that you're repurposing it. And that you're, you, it's in this one form that isn't particularly helpful. And by any number of mechanisms, you can take it from this unhelpful, unproductive, harmful, in fact, form and turn it into something that's much more useful and has uh, applications in all sorts of industries. And Carbon removal, in a way, is is addressing all this debt that we've built up as as part of the industrial era, moving into a technological civilization. Like, as part of that, we had to have cheap, easy energy, and we didn't have the technology to do it better. So we used fossil fuels, and we took all the stuff that was in the ground and we put it in the air, and now we have to pay off that debt that has allowed us to get to this point where we have computers and TVs and, you know, cars and um, air travel, you know, airplanes, like we have to pay that off now that we've benefited from it. And it's our part of our responsibility to the next generation to make it okay. Hey, the generations before us got us here from an energy standpoint and then a technology standpoint. And now it's our responsibility to uh, pay off that debt and leave the future in a place where we can all continue to enjoy it and our, our you know, offspring can continue to enjoy the world that we've grown up in. I find visuals really simple to deal with that too. You can just see like, okay, greenhouse gas emissions lead to rising temperatures, rising temperatures lead to um, effect on human systems, human systems. Uh, put more carbon in the atmosphere, leads to more greenhouse gases. I made a lot of these images to just show like very basically how the concentration of carbon in the atmosphere is sort of, you can sequester it or um, kind of start sucking it into the earth, um, literally through the biomass above ground, but also the larger the biomass gets above ground, the healthier um, the soil gets underneath and the healthier the humus layer is, like the more carbon it holds and stuff like that. I know lately there's a lot of literature on how, how permanent that is, but um, just in terms of explaining the balance of carbon, it's, it's pretty useful for me to show, show this kind of thing.
I love all these answers. I hear metaphors and analogies and stories that I've tried, I've used myself. Uh, I've certainly found that for me, the, the metaphor that works most is thinking about that there's carbon in the air and we have the opportunity to take it out. Um, but I also hear a lot of different stories and different things. I think it, it to me, it brings to, to mind that there's different audiences and different audiences need different messages, different connections. On the other hand, why don't they all say the same thing? I think that's where we are at today. In 2020, carbon removal is a conversation. Carbon removal is something that we're figuring out together. We're starting to talk about it with, with people outside of the bounds of the industry. People are they're curious, they're starting to poke their heads in and, and read up on stuff. So to me, the, the idea that we heard different answers from, from all these different people, they're beautiful answers, they're beautiful metaphors, analogies, uh, whatever the difference is, I, I forget between an analogy and a metaphor, but they're both there, I think, uh, and they're both needed. So the more conversations that we have, the more we try to figure this out, nobody has the, the, the correct answer yet. I don't think there is one. Carbon removal will continue to be something that we explore together. Uh, and I'm interested to see how that changes. So in a, in a year, maybe we can repeat this and ask people what carbon removal is in 2021. And we'll see what they say.